Welcome to week 11 of Wake Up Productive. This week, we're going to talk about your personal transformation. All right, so let's talk about transformation. One of the pioneers of the concept of personal transformation and someone that I really admire is Werner Erhardt, uh, the creator of the S Training and the Landmark Forum. You probably know who he is. Werner realized that you can create an experience of actually transforming who you are at a deep level, where you actually feel transformed, that's permanent and that is very powerful. And what this is about is creating the next evolution or the next version of you. And if you're, you're actually gonna you know, reach the kind of success that you're capable of, you're going to need to transform yourself and you're gonna need to do it several times. You're actually going to need to become the next version of yourself, like an upgraded version of you. And in fact, you're even gonna to have to become a you that you can't imagine right now that's beyond what you think is possible. When you go down the road five years, 10 years using these materials and evolving yourself and, and really reaching your capability, you're gonna look back, you're gonna, you're gonna realize you couldn't even imagine what was possible for you. Just look back five or 10 years in your own life could you imagine how far you would have come? Okay, so you're even gonna become a version of you that you can't imagine right now beyond what you think is possible. Now this is another one of those miracles of being human, okay? That we can imagine a different, more evolved version of ourselves and then go to work to realize it and create it. Okay, so imagine you, you get to think about a different version of you and then go and manifest it. Okay, it's, it's, it's an incredible power. And I'm not talking here like, you know, the woo-woo, hippy-dippy, you know, kind of imagine a new car in my garage, and then when I get home, like, poof, it's their stuff. I'm talking about actually making a picture in your mind and then creating it here in the real world. Now, to do this, you actually have to believe that you can change yourself, okay? You, you can, for example, imagine a fitter, more muscular version of yourself, and then go to work to create it, with exercise and nutrition. You can imagine having a relationship with someone that you don't know, and then go find them and meet them and build a friendship, okay? I've done this many times in my life. You can imagine knowing something that you don't know, and then go and learn it, and then you know it, okay? So you can change yourself. And of course, you can imagine a more evolved version of yourself. So you can go to a higher level, a higher perspective, and actually imagine, envision what a more evolved version of yourself would think like, feel like, and behave like, and then you can go and realize it and create it. Again, this is so miraculous, it's so profound, that I can't even hold this in my mind for very long, okay? It's, it's too much to think about how powerful it is. But beyond just imagining things differently, you have to take action. Okay, so the tools that we're learning here in Wake Up Productive, they're designed to increase productivity, in other words, getting more of what you want in your life by taking action, but they can be used at a higher level to create the version of you that is your higher potential. And in order to do that, you must practice seeing or visioning the higher version of you and then taking that vision and using these tools to make it reality. My mentor, Jerry Ballinger, Okay, he had a great metaphor that I like to talk about. Maybe you've heard me tell the story. He said that your life is like a giant painting. And what most people are doing is they're going along painting the painting of their life, but they're looking back at what they've already painted to decide what to paint next. So they're kind of painting the same thing over and over. They're, they're, they're like making an extension of the past right now. But instead, we can turn around and we can look at the blank canvas of the future and we can decide what we want to paint, right? We can decide the art piece that we want our life to be. Werner Erhardt would say that a lot of us are putting our past into our future, okay? This is another concept that can start to make you a little bit dizzy, but consider, right? If you think about your past too much and you believe it too much, you'll actually just create it over and over again. I personally, it's, it's something that's upsetting to me when I meet someone and, or I know someone or I'm related to someone and they tell their story about the past, why things happened the way they did, 
and why they are the way they are, and they just tell the past story over and over again, and they just create their life in the image of the way that things used to be. And, you know, as Werner would say, instead of putting our past into our future, we can actually start putting a better future into our future and living from possibility. Tony Robbins likes to say the past doesn't equal the future. Okay? And this sort of snaps us out of the trance of believing that what happened in the past is going to happen in the future. Okay? And it can start empowering us to think about what we'd like to create. And, and here's the key, to actually invest more time mentally thinking about what we want to create rather than just having our mind go on automatic repetition, autopilot of thinking about the past and thinking the thoughts that we continue to think. Okay? Consciously choosing to invest more mental time and energy thinking about what we want to create. Now, in order to create something new, we have to notice what's keeping us the way that we are. My good friend and mentor, Wyatt Woodsmall, he says that in order to change, we have to become not me. We have to stop being ourselves. We have to be something different. And one of the things that limits us and prevents us from you know, going on and transforming and evolving are the things that we're attached to, the ideas that we're attached to, our habits, um, the, the physical situations, sometimes relationships that are holding, holding us back. Okay, So when we associate two things together, we, we kind of form an attachment between them. If we think one thought and then we think another thought, Right? We, we start to form this, uh, this kind of attachment bond almost. In uh, neuroscience, they say neurons that fire together wire together. So if neurons keep firing together, eventually they always fire together. If one of them fires, the other one does. And attachments to ideas that we like, they start to become beliefs. And beliefs start building up and becoming a self-image or an identity, okay? or kind of an egoplex. One of the reasons why it's hard to change habits is that we're also working at the belief and the identity level unconsciously. We're actually talking about where we have associations and attachments that have become beliefs and identities and they've all fused together, okay, and we need to let go, we need to loosen some of that stuff so that we can free up energy to actually change, to, to you know, kind of reuse those resources to become a different version of ourselves. In our last session, we imagined an ideal day, right, by blowing up our calendar and just saying, what if I started over? Well, we need to do this with ourselves. Imagine, what if we just kind of blew this thing up and started over? Who would we want to be? Now, we also, we need to avoid unconsciously putting our past into our future. Okay, so how do we put our past into our future without realizing it? Well, there's a, a great quote um, that uh, Werner has said, and I think originally came from Carl Jung, which is, what you resist persists. Okay? What you put energy into resisting, it only persists and in fact it grows. So for example, spending time with people who are incentivized to keep you who you were rather than who you could possibly be, right? it holds on to you and it creates this resistance that creates a persistent version of you. Okay, so we have to be careful about resisting things. We have to be careful about the social environments we put ourselves in. We have to be careful about the thoughts that we think. Also, we've talked to this a little bit, our unconscious minds, they don't understand negatives. Okay? They don't tend to understand not. Okay, so it's the old, if I say to you, don't think of a pink elephant. Okay? Don't think of a pink elephant. Do not think of a pink elephant. What happens in your mind? Okay, you, you have to think of a pink elephant. The don't part gets left out. So, you know, if you're smoking and you want to not smoke anymore, saying to yourself, stop smoking, stop smoking, all your mind hears is smoking, smoking, smoking. If we want to change our diet, we can't say stop eating junk food, stop eating junk food, because all our brain hears is junk food, and we make pictures of junk food, and then we start obsessing about junk food. That isn't the answer. Remember, instead, we must focus on the outcome we want to create, on our intention. Another way of saying this is that there are a million futures that we want to avoid, but there's only one that we really want to create. Okay? When you start thinking about what you don't want, 
you realize that there are basically infinite futures that you do not want to have happen. Okay? And this also means that there's a lot of potential to spend and invest a lot of mental and emotional time thinking about these things that you don't want to have happen and that by doing that you are not creating the outcome that you do want to have happen and in a lot of cases you inadvertently you, you create a self-fulfilling uh, you know, kind of a future where you're creating the thing that you're trying to avoid which is you know, really a tragedy in life. And again, when you really start thinking about it, at any one time, there's only one future that you want to create for yourself in your life. One ideal future. Now, as we know, it's not going to be perfect when we get there. It's not going to be exactly the way we wanted it. But the more you can design and sculpt and consider and put intention into seeing the future you want to create clearly, the more likely you are to create it. Okay? And this one future that you want to create it becomes clearer as you keep working on the picture. So it becomes better and it becomes something that's more motivating, something that draws you toward it. Okay, so it's a powerful combination to both stop investing energy, resisting what we don't want, and thinking about what we don't want to have happen, and then unintentionally creating it, and then to also let go of the attachment that we have to who we thought we were, okay, to our story, our identity, and the attachments and identifications that we have around who we are. When we let go of the energy, when we stop putting the energy into resisting and thinking about what we don't want, and we also let go of the attachment that we have to the story of who we are, this creates an open space for us to start designing and creating the version of us that we want to create that we want to be and that we want to live into. And this is ultimately why we create new habits. Once we get clear about what's possible for us and what we want to create, and then we understand how much more fulfilling our lives would be, we become very motivated to get to work creating that in reality. Okay? And this is why we learn and practice and refine and master the skill of creating new habits so that we actually do it and we do it consistently. Okay, this, is, this is truly like sculpting or re-sculpting ourselves in the dimension of time. You probably heard, you know, Michelangelo said that he didn't carve the statue of David, that David was inside the block of marble and he just needed to be released. Okay, this is kind of carving in the, you know, a three-dimensional space out of a piece of rock. Well, you can actually re-sculpt who you are, how you think, how you feel, and how you behave, if you use these tools. Dennis Waitley, who's one of the original self-help and personal development geniuses, in his uh, great program, The Psychology of Winning, he points out that top athletes and high performers, they've developed the ability to manufacture optimism. Okay, so think about that. They, they develop the ability to manufacture their own optimism. And the way that they do this is they, they use their imagination and they make pictures of themselves winning, succeeding, achieving. And then they play these pictures for themselves in their minds. And they repeat them. And they do meditations on these pictures of themselves achieving what they want. And it turns out that the mind experiences the pictures of winning in a similar way that it would experience to actually really winning or achieving. And research has shown that visualization like this can be very effective. Okay, so manufacturing your own optimism. All right, so we're talking about changing ourselves and manufacturing optimism and feelings. What about authenticity? How does that fit into this picture? A lot of us are concerned with being authentic, real, honest, you know, being who we really feel we are from the inside out. The idea of, you know, manufacturing a feeling or a version of you that isn't reality right now Sometimes it makes us feel like we might be being inauthentic or we might be selling out. And it's an important consideration, okay? And it's something that we should consider regularly. It's something we should take seriously. When I spent a lot of time teaching dating advice, okay, this is a good example, I would have men come to me and say, you know, I don't want to learn dating techniques because I want a woman to like me for who I really am. And if I do the technique, right, that's not who I really am. And I would say, well, if you don't, for example, learn how to start a conversation with a woman, 
she's never going to learn who you really are in the first place. Okay, so sometimes we have to fake it until we make it. But we have to do it in a way that doesn't violate our own internal ethical code. Okay, we can stretch our image of who we see ourselves as, but there are limits to it. You know, and we have to, we have to check in with ourselves and our, and our ethics to make sure that we feel that we're being authentic as well. Now, when you can begin imagining a version of yourself that you know is possible, that inspires you, and that pulls you forward, okay, that's when you're starting to get it. And when you're able to see the next change that you need to make, the next sculpting move, okay, the next habit to put in place, the next condition to put in place, and then go through the discomfort to make it, okay, do the 30 days to put the new habit in place, or do the work to make the change, that's when you've become a transformed, much more powerful you know, human being. Sometimes to do this, we have to go inside and change how we're feeling emotionally because the way that we're feeling isn't serving our own evolution. Maybe we're feeling resistant or afraid. And when you start learning how to do it, learn how to change your emotions, and then look back and know that you made the right decision to change how you feel inside, okay, again, a very powerful skill that will serve you for the rest of your life. You may have heard the story of Viktor Frankl, right? He, uh, he wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning. He was in a Nazi concentration camp. And while he was there, he looked around and he saw that most people fell apart and you know they, they gave up and they didn't make it. But some people did, and he paid attention, and he learned how to find optimism and find hope and joy in the smallest things, you know? He writes about when he would get his soup, there would be a, a pea, you know, like an extra little pea in his soup, and he would see it, and he would feel the joy of getting that, that little morsel of food. Okay? He mastered the ability to use his situation as leverage to feel a more inspiring or a more positive feeling. And uh, he's a great model of someone who can, you know, get leverage on themselves and get themselves to do things that most of us wouldn't take the time, effort, and energy to do. Now, one of the highest leverage moves we can make to impact our feelings and actually our whole lives and the way we think is comparison. So we are always comparing ourselves to others and comparing the images that we have in our mind to what's happening in reality. It's happening unconsciously most of the time, but we're always going through comparison. And by comparing, for example, ourselves with someone who's more fortunate, we'll usually feel bad, but if we compare ourselves with someone who's less fortunate, we'll feel good. Okay, this is where the saying comes from, count your blessings. When you think about your blessings, you feel better because you start seeing where your life is relative to where it could be. So if you want to feel better, if you want to feel good about yourself, think about people who have it worse than you. And if you want to feel bad, think about people who have it better than you. I read about um, the CEO of, I think it was uh, the Levi's company. And what he would do is he would keep a journal on his desk. And every time he had a positive accomplishment or a little win, he would write them down. Okay, and through the day, he would just write down his wins. And then, when he needed a pick-me-up, on a regular basis, he'd open it up and he'd just flip through and he'd look at all of these wins and accomplishments that he had. And he'd review all the great things that have happened. Right? Another way to make him, himself feel great. Okay, and this is a great way to build confidence and build esteem and to make ourselves feel more optimistic, is to go and review our wins in life. Okay? So just take a moment right now Think about a few wins that you've had lately in your life. You know, where have you had some successes? Even if they were small, think about three of them, four of them, five of them, and then just notice the effect that it has on your emotions. Okay, so let's do some exercises right now. Okay, so we're gonna do these on a few blank pages. First one, make a list of what you're resisting. Okay, where are you investing energy in your life resisting? Resisting people, ideas, situations, internally, where are you putting energy into resistance? Okay, where are you putting energy into resistance that you could free up if you just accepted and started letting things happen? Okay, so that's the first exercise. 
List what you're resisting. The second exercise is make a one-page list of your most significant achievements in your life. Okay? One page, all of the most significant achievements. And they're things that are significant to you, not to others. Now, maybe you did something that was significant to someone else, and that made you feel good too, but it's the things that when you look back on, you are most proud of. They make you feel the best about yourself. Okay, make a list of one page of your achievements, review it, and then notice how you feel inside when you look them over. The next exercise is to make the vision of the ideal you. Okay, what is the idealized version of you physically, emotionally, socially, and then mentally, intellectually? Okay, what would the ideal you stand like? How would you carry yourself? How would you breathe? What would your body language be? How would the ideal version of you feel? Okay? How would you feel inside and how would you interact with others socially? What would the idealized version of you believe? What would your self-image be? How would you think? What would be the self-talk of the ideal version of you? Okay, so take a page and write out what the ideal version of you would be. So once you've done these three exercises, Okay, then what we want to do is we want to start putting habits and conditions in place to create them. Okay, so you've now been doing your personal success ritual. You've been doing your business success ritual. You're starting to design entire days, okay, kind of super rituals for, for business success and for rejuvenation. Now it's time to start taking responsibility and putting the next highest leverage ritual in place and the next highest leverage condition in place to move you toward the you that you know is possible, okay? And by visioning the next evolution of yourself, seeing where you wanna go in the future of your life, and then putting that, that habit in place and putting that condition in place, again, that's how you start to take responsibility. That's how you really start to become an adult. Okay, so do those exercises, choose the next conditions and rituals to put in place, and I will see you next week, the final week of Wake Up Productive. Oh, 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 oh,